Okay, so I made a real quick decision. Uh, we're going to work on uh, this part right here. We're going to put in just uh, countertops, which are 24 inches off the wall, just to kind of make that a little bit easy. Um, there's probably two inches on each side of this side here. So um, when we go over here to this wall, we can do something like um, offset, offset 24 inches here to go this far. All right. Um, then what we'll do is uh, we can draw a line. Oops, click line, click line that goes from here back to here. Um, you can do the same on this end down here, from here back to here. But we're going to go ahead and just move them in um, uh, two inches. So we'll move this, right click, base point this way, and hit our ortho so the ortho is on. We'll go two inches that way. And do the same on the other end. So click move, move this one with a base point right here that goes this way. You've used move enough to know how to do it without me doing it. I'm going to click fill it with my radius at zero and still just go in here and put that in. Fill it radius there, zero, put that in. So that's kind of in place. Um, that might get confusing, so I'm going to get that out of the way for now. I'll just move this back over, actually right there to that perpendicular. So now we know where that counter space is right there. Um, We'll do the same thing over here on the other side. We'll offset 24 inches and go from here to here. Uh, and what we can do is we should be able to copy this line and this line right here. Oh, well, you won't even do that line. We'll just do this. Copy this one from that endpoint to shift right click in this perpendicular right, perpendicular right here. And that, that establishes where the end of that is. So now we can click trim, select that as a cutting edge, right click and click that part right there and gets rid of that. So now we know where the counter spaces are in there. Um, <clears throat> this is where it gets kind of kind of fun. Let's let's uh, think about this right here, this range and the space where this is at. Uh, what we want to do here is we're going to go to um, go to the internet, go to www.lowes.com. Uh, They're giving us information. So let's put in refrigerator. You know, click on that and see what comes up and we could get really expensive depending on what size we wanted to put into this house or something like that <clears throat> um, let's say we like something like uh, it depends on what you want to put in but let's say we went for something like this one right here uh, let's see is that too pricey that's over a thousand dollars let's go with the uh, um, Let's go with one that's closer to it like this. Um, yeah, let's let's go here. Frigid air seals, uh, frigid air stainless steel, to so it's easy to clean. Should leave no fingerprints, that sort of stuff. Um, what we want to do is come down a little bit farther here. We're looking for specifications, and when we come down here in specifications, it tells us there's an ice maker, all the cool things that come with it. You'd be specifying this when you when you do this but you're looking for this when you're making the drawings so if you make the drawings you have to tell whoever's you know building the house this is what we planned for um, so you're looking for the common width and the actual width 36 inches there and you're also looking for the depth um, of it you don't really need to include the handle uh, so it's going to be really this excluding the handle so it's 32 so it's going to be 36 inches wide by 32 all right so when we go back over here we can go ahead and draw this in. Let's say we're going to go 32 deep, 32 inches this way, 36 inches this way, 32 that way, and then C to close. So now we've got a refrigerator. Now, the simple thing to do would be to move this whole thing. That's what our size is. We'll move it to this midpoint. Click move again and this time we'll come back and go right to, you could even have gone to that midpoint right there, it's fine. Now usually what happens is you usually get about an inch on each side of this um, for clearance. Sometimes it's a little bigger, uh, sometimes it's less depending on what's going on with your uh, manufacturer, I mean your con your uh, construction crew. But if I'm going to go ahead and draw a line, let's say we can, we can actually do this. We'll offset, we'll just say one inch and offset this line this way and this line this way puts that refrigerator in and we can use this click trim and select that one and that one is the cutting edge and we'll get rid of this and we can do the fillet that we did before and put that right in there 
So now we've left a gap for our refrigerator to fit right into the middle of that so we got counter space on each side of the refrigerator. Now generally when you're making a refrigerator, what you're going to do also is offset this. We're going to do two inches because we got to make a door thickness here. Um, and that tells us what the door is. And in this type of uh, kitchen, where you're going to have a sink over here and your stove over there, you're going to want the door to open that way. So what you'll do is do something real simple like this. You can uh, just go ahead in here, create a circle, and let's just create a circle right here that has a, a radius of, say, one inch. And we'll move it over this way. Move it over this way, let's say two inches. Um, and then we'll trim, use this as a cutting edge, and we'll trim that part of it off. And that just kind of tells you where the handle is um, for this refrigerator that we had there. Uh, actually, the one we selected, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, let's go back to this, was, uh, it was a double-doored one. So if you wanted to do that, uh, you could go in here and put this right in the middle. Um, let's go here, down to here. So now we know it's a double-door. And we can move this from this end point here and then move it over this way one inch. And then we can mirror it. I meant where's mirror? There it is. Mirror it from here to here. So now we know we've got a double door refrigerator there. Okay, now we'll do the same thing when we're looking at. Um, uh, Oops, that's the range. I messed that up. The refrigerator goes over there. So, we'll fix it real quick. So, we'll just take this, um, go back to AutoCAD, and we'll copy this um, up. I'm not going to change anything yet. We'll copy this up to, say, here somewhere. Uh, we're going to rotate it around 180 degrees. I'll just pick a point. We'll go around 180 so it's facing the other way. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Move. I'm going to move this whole thing. Oops, let's see. We don't need this one, so when we click Move, I'll just do a window around this part of it. But I'm going to select that as my base point and put that in the corner right here. So now we know where that goes, and we can use this one. So we'll click Trim, use that as the cutting edge, right-click, and then get rid of that. So now the refrigerator is done, and it's in the right place now. Let's see, the range might be similar, or it probably isn't going to stick out as far. So, I totally messed that up, but we'll go back in here and we'll put in, let's put in stove. And let's see what happens when we start searching for stoves. Yeah, here we go. Oops, no thanks. Um, depending on whether the house is going to be a gas house or electric house, uh, you know, could depend on a lot of things. Um, let's pick something that we don't want to get too, too pricey. Um, $799 is a decent price if that's on sale. That's a nice big one, 5.8. So let's, let's go with that just for fun. Let's click on this one, and we'll go right down to the specs. And we're looking for, let's see, there's your capacity. We're looking for the size of, uh, of this. Did I overdo it? There we go. Width and depth. So the depth is 23. Oh, here we go. Look, it tells us right here what the cutout needs to be um, for this. That looks like that goes over top. Your width is 25 inches, and the cutout, the depth is 21 inches. Um, but it's actually going to cut out all the way back to the wall. So the width is 25. So we'll go 25 deep, and then oh, 25 wide, and we'll make it 24 deep. So let's go back to here. We will go ahead and create a, do this, we're going to go down this way, um, 25, go this way, 24, wait a minute, um, it was 25 wide, I'm, I confused myself, I'm thinking about the mistake I made, depth is 24 here, and then the width of it is 29.75, that cut out something different, that's for the part that goes over the top. So um, the width is going to be 29.75. So let's go here. We'll go across this way, 29.75. Oops, twice, two mistakes, inches. And then this way, 24. 
and then C to close. Well, I messed that up because it was 25. So I'll move that one up there one inch this way. So now, so that'll be that one. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and erase this since I did mess that up so bad. But we'll move this from this midpoint here to that midpoint right there. See the gap we've got? That's a huge gap, and we don't want that. So let's offset again. We'll offset, say, one inch on each side. That one and that one. We can go ahead and do two. There's two ways we could do it. We could stretch it. You can do stretch like this and stretch this whole thing as long as it does that crossing from there to, say, this perpendicular. And then we just have to remind, remember to erase that. Or you can just go ahead and click extend, right click, and get that one right there. And then we erase this, grab this grip, drag it down here. All right, now we don't know that that's a stove yet. Uh, generally, the back side of your stove, the part that's against the wall, is going to have a little bit of an offset there too because there's a part there that's usually two to four inches. So we're going to make it about four inches there. We'll offset this that comes out that way. So that's the part where the dials and stuff usually are. Um, and it did grab that little line. And then we'll just put some circles in here. And usually those circles are 8 and 10 inches. So we'll make it, uh, whoops, we want to do a circle diameter. Let's just say we make them that about 10 inches. And let's make another one that's about 8 inches and see what happens. 8 inches. See how that works out? So we'll go in here. And from the center point down there, We'll come down to about right here somewhere. And then I'm just going to move that from that center point there to there. This is a wide uh, a stove. I'm going to go ahead and do the mirror this this way. And so they go this direction like that. Right click, enter. And usually they have one big one in the front and one in the back. That kind of thing. So what we'll do this time is we'll mirror this again. Um, ah. It doesn't much matter. It could have been all eight inches and it'd have been fine. So just go ahead and click diameter. You know that that's a stove by looking at it. All right. Um, so now we're talking about the sink on the other side. So the sink's going to be over here. So let's go back to Lowe's. And we're going to look for a sink. And we're just going to look for a stainless steel sink. All right. Um, simple enough. That one you could use that. See if there's one that looks more like would go in here. And here's one, nice one. Decent price. Two, two sides. Let's go down and look at their specifications. So our specification showed it's 33 inches wide by 22, uh, oh, it's 22 deep. So we'll go 33 across, 22 deep, and that's going to fit right on the wall. So we'll get back here, and we'll do that more in just a second on the next